podcast time that's right ben for tools is proud to present a home improvement podcast my name is adam you all know my co-host jordan jordan good evening good evening my friend how are you doing doing well on uh we're recording this on martin luther king uh day here and uh i think we were both off work so that's always good yeah a little extended weekend i suppose you could say uh what did you do with your extended weekend uh, I did this, and this will be you tr- besides fun. badgering badgering me to record earlier and earlier today. Well, you yeah, well, uh, mostly whenever you can't record, I want to know what you're doing. That's more important <laughs> than recording. And I found out, and it doesn't seem like it was more important. But you know, that's not the point. <laughs> How dare uh, I spend time with my family? I know the nerve. Uh, I did something <laughs> that is actually really really funny today. Um, I went to the local Milwaukee Jewish Museum, and I uh, walked around the exhibit of the Blacklist. So pretty funny stuff. Wow, and talk yeah, about the Hollywood, comedy. The, the Hollywood blacklist, yeah. It was, I mean, I, everybody was just there in, in stitches because it's all just so funny. Uh, but no, it was uh, it was uh, it was like free on Monday, so I figured hmm. I had the day off. I pop over there, and uh, yeah, it was very very interesting for a you know a film guy like me. I like real movies, uh, so I was naturally pretty interested in that. And uh, is yeah, there any than, is there any reason in particular that's in Milwaukee? I, I don't I don't know. Oh. um... No, I think the there's just a Milwaukee Jewish Museum. Uh, okay, and, and it was an exhibit an, inside it's, of it's it an, or something? It's, an, it's exactly right. It's an exhibition. So uh, beyond that, I, I don't know. I think it's just something they chose to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was, I was happy to be able to go f- see it. And... How did you find out about that? I mean, are you... Is there a local uh, newsletter you subscribe the, to? Or I'm very what? plugged into the Jewish community. No, um, <laughs> I uh, I was going for an evening stroll a few weeks ago, and I walked by it, and I, I saw a billboard that, uh, that said it had been extended. Wow! And uh, that was that. You know, it's kismet, Jordan. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. For all was, those people who stuff. say that uh, you know traditional advertising, the the billboards, the newspapers, all that stuff is dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Exhibit A of why it's not. It literally an you. exhibit, literally an exhibit. Uh, also, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know the advertising, if it was that effective, because I did go on the free day, but, uh, you know. <laughs> they got you in the door, all right? That's they got what me they in want. the door, and I almost, I almost bought a sticker, so. Here's the uh, thing, they got you yeah. in the door, and now you're talking about it on a podcast that's going to reach literally tens of people. No. None Jordan of them added, residing in Milwaukee. Jordan, add a zero to that, and we... I think there's a Milwaukee listenership that is just uh, so deep in the woodwork uh, that we don't even know about them. <laughs> That's where our first meetup is going to be in Milwaukee. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, meet at the Jewish Museum. Uh, uh, naturally, yeah, Jordan. Uh, but it's been a nice weekend. Uh, busy, busy couple of weeks with work. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be. Has here it calmed down you. now? I mean, yeah, that was. Uh, that, y- I was concerned for you. Things were getting a little crazy. Yeah, I don't want, yeah. I mean, there's nothing I like less than hard work. So yeah, it was pretty <laughs> tough. But uh, that explains I this li- podcast. I live to tell the tale, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy to be here talking home improvement with uh, you know one of my best pals. And that's you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, my story of what I did was not nearly as exciting as what you did, but you, I, I oh, did. Oh, make... did I see you at the Jewish Museum in Milwaukee? <laughs> I flew up and flew back. Uh, okay, yeah, it was a, yeah. qu- a, qu- a quick trip. Are your arms trip. tired? Or? Well, <laughs> you know, this is a good episode to talk about flying, if, if you ask oh, me. Oh, right. Indeed. Yeah. But no, we headed over to Disney Springs and just kind of enjoyed um, the weather. It was nice and sunny out. A little bit cooler, but uh, nice out. And had You want to talk about cold, and... pal? It's negative two <laughs> degrees here today, all right, friend? So don't tell me what cold <laughs> there's is. A reason, there's a reason why I just said cooler. Uh, yeah. You know, you talked about how you were braving an afternoon or evening walk. I was mm-hmm. I was yeah. worried that you'd come out frostbitten. Yeah. If you're, if but you, you did right And you were right to think that. Sorry to interrupt, at least, but I just, at wanted, least, just wanted to give you a little perspective, snowflake. At least, now I won't have to, <laughs> at least now I won't have to hear your stupid typing over on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh no we just uh you know we got some food we walked around they've renovated some of the stores over there so we checked checked that out and so it was it was a good time and uh came home and now i'm ready to record a, an awesome episode with you uh get mm-hmm. back in the swing of things and 
I mean, we talked about our day, but what we've been yeah. waiting to talk about, at least I, what I've been waiting to talk about since you told me yeah. about it, mm-hmm. is your improv class. Um, I know you're funny, and I can only... I can only... News to me. It's the first I've heard you say that. <laughs> I can only imagine that this class was just overwhelmed with some of your jokes. I know they're probably all like home improvement centric. You're oh, you always have like a tool belt on in your skits and stuff. But I, I'd I like to hear how it went. Jordan, I do. I do a lot yeah. of work with props. Uh, I w- <laughs> like wigs and, and so on. Um, well, I, I'll tell you what, Jordan. I don't. I don't have a lot to say because I'm still pretty early on in the class. But uh, I will right, say this. All right. The, the opening week was, uh, it was last week, and we, had, we were just fresh off a conversation, uh, maybe not fresh off, but sort of fresh off a conversation, where I had talked about how I uh, have a tough time talking about my, my home improvement podcast in public, right? I never, ne- never really know what to say, so I said, you know what, I'm done with this. We're the, the number one home improvement podcast on the internet, per our Twitter. Uh, you know, we've had several guest Talk stars. Talk about facts. Uh, tens of thousands of downloads uh, over the course of, of several years, uh, verging on hundreds. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just going to own it. So we went around in a circle doing an icebreaker, uh, a.k.a. the Devil's Game. <laughs> and, I was uh, going to say, this is your worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, but I owned it. And uh, they said, give a fun fact. And I said, yeah, my name is Adam, and uh, I, I, I host a modestly popular home improvement podcast. And everyone was like, everyone was like, and then questions what? were firing off at you right no, they're now. They're like, they're like home podcast. Yeah, I subscribe to that. It's great. <laughs> the, oh, we're part of the Milwaukee chapter. <laughs> they said, they said like renovations, and I said no, 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 no. No, uh, I wish. People seemed impressed, and there was like a big spike in our downloads the next day. So I that, really, I was wondering. Yeah, no correlation for sure. Uh, wow. But you know, the class is good so far. Uh, third week is tomorrow, and. Uh, yeah, if I seem funnier, well, you'll know why. <laughs> and if He's I seem less funny, his funny bone. well, uh, you can blame uh, comedy sports Milwaukee, blame. I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm I'm interested, and I'm sure the audience is interested to hear more as that develops. I just and, hope uh, you can maybe keep that'll up, be because your... uh, you know, there's already I've already been a behind for like you and I when it comes to funny, <laughs> but put, put me I was in a class for two I'm years. Be way ahead. You're just gonna actually end up talking to yourself, and I'll just be stuck to editing, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that's about all I got to say about that. So, uh, Jordan, should we get into the episode this week? All right. Let's talk about episode 117, "Fear of Flying." This one was written by Max Eisenberg, and he last wrote a frozen moment. I don't remember hearing Max in a long time, so it's been a while. Uh, mm-hmm. A frozen moment, if you recall, it had the man's bathroom, and then there was. They were setting up like a photo where yeah. some of them were dressed as elves and some of them were dressed as you know, Mrs. Claus and I don't know what else. But uh, that was the last episode Max did. <laughs> this one aired February 13, 1996, mm-hmm. and it's time for alternative titles. Adam, how many Let's, do you have? This is, uh, this is effectively their Valentine's Day episode, but uh, not much romance in it then. A little strange. I would say none. Unless I mean, you talk Mark, about Mark uh, Jill. Jill, with, Jill and... Mark, Mark falls in love with that plane, doesn't he? He does. Jill falls out of love with the piano. Yeah. Well, kind of a, a heartbreak fall, episode as well. Uh, go ahead. I have uh, four. All right. I have three. Um, I'll let you go first. Okay. Uh, shifting gears. Okay. All right. Yeah, like the one scene truck. where that happens yep. and <laughs> then we don't well, see that again. Fir- first one I wrote down, so, you know. <laughs> You're just going through trying to get one per scene. Uh, mm-hmm. What about? I, I wish Samuel Jackson was in this movie, or Me in too. this in this episode, but he's not. But uh, taken from one of his movies, Mark's on a plane. <laughs> they call me Mister Glass. Uh, good one. All right, here's my next one. Uh, Pierre, no thanks. <laughs> All right, I got one that's just Pierre, no. Okay, good, good, good. It was there. We took it. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is probably the worst one. Uh, it is, you'll like it. The Adolescent Airman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two words that have never gone together in the history of mankind. Well done. <laughs> I got uh, I got One more? Okay. I got a singing one, so. Do it. Uh, Mark's learning to fly. Bang, bang. 
I like it. Yeah. But I, I ain't got song. no wings. I don't know the Tom- song. Is it called? Is it called "I'm Learning to Fly"? It's "Learning to Fly" by Tom Petty. Okay. Come on, man. Sorry. Rest in peace, though. Uh, yeah. Last one for me. Just plain dangerous. <laughs> you brought your A game this week. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it felt pretty good. I mean, it's like out shifting gears and you got three pretty solid ones. Yeah, yeah, but you got to open that up so you can kind of just set the tempo, you know? Were, were you good. aware that the... I didn't I didn't know this until I looked at the uh, trivia, but this is uh, referencing a book called Fear of Flying by Erica uh, either Jong or Young, which was controversial in its views of female sexuality and feminism. Did you know? Are you familiar with that book at all? Never even heard of it. A lot of books like that. (laughs) My library is chock full of them, but that one has not made on. I know. I know what you can get me for my birthday, though. Yeah, I uh, already did, friend. (laughs) Great, great. All right, let's open the episode. Uh, We're gonna open on location, uh, tool time. It's kind of pre-show, so they haven't done anything quite yet. But Bud pulls up in his new whip. It's a nice new truck. He's ghost, uh, some... he's ghost riding. He's put, it in, <laughs> he's, put it, he's put it in drive, and he's still like dancing around on the outside. Oh, man. Uh, he's Did always been ever, ahead I, of the I curve. Used to love, I used to love ghost yes, riding the whip. I remember. I think we oh, have man. YouTube videos of it for some reason. I thought that was so funny. I haven't thought about it until you said whip. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, I used to ghost ride a lot. It's very dangerous. <laughs> it's not. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm glad that it's gone. Uh, I you know who, heard you know of who it else? Really lo- uh, friend of the pod and your college roommate Ryan Thornburg also. Loved oh, Ghost I didn't know with. that. Oh I man, he loved know it more that. than I did. He loved I lived with him it. for four years, and we literally never talked about ghost riding. I didn't. As far as I can tell, you guys never talked. Period. Uh, I was going to uh, say those, <laughs> those living circumstances seem strange to me, but I wasn't there. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah. all I can tell uh, you, all I can tell you is that Ryan was very mysterious and he disappeared at any time and he would just say, be back later. You know what he was doing when he left was he was ghost riding the whip. <laughs> that explains it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so back to Bud. How about that? Back to Bud. Uh, he goes inside and Al, there, before he does, there's kind of the same banter that we've had between Bud and Al where Al's... You know, Bud is kind of, um, der- I don't know, he's undermining Al and being mean to Al, and Al is he trying to suck up. He just straight up does not like Al for whatever reason. He doesn't. Just yeah, hasn't he doesn't. from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently this gear shift is a gift from Tim, uh, so it's like mm-hmm. a custom gear shift on Bud's new car. And so uh, Bud goes inside, Al needs to move the car before something bad happens, and Tim gives him the wrong info on how to move the gear shift, and Al goes forward instead of backward, and Tim is up on a ladder or scaffolding of some sort. Mm-hmm. He gets hit, falls. Looks like he takes a really hard fall. It's a, I don't know. If it's he... a heck of a stunt. I mean, it's not. It's not Tim. When you see the guy come down, it's it's obviously not Tim. But whoever did it, I mean, it looked Ouch. pretty painful. Yeah, it was a serious fall. It was uh, visceral in a way. A lot of the stunts usually aren't like they cut away or something but this guy took a lick for sure i was surprised yeah yep Um, and he he bounces up but it's tim you know so it's tim yeah you know paints all over the new car and bud comes out and it's a horrible horrible sight for a new car owner worst nightmare yeah i had a couple notes here um can't wait to hear them they're they're working (laughs) thank you appreciate that (laughs) they're working pretty hard to make it seem like it's cold outside you know, like oh, they got the like big wearing, fluffy like, jackets yeah, on. Everybody's like wearing layers and stuff, but like the sun is, you know, you can tell it's it's not. Uh, That's not Michigan. Secondly, I'm t- I'll say. Uh, <laughs> and then I don't know, just uh, the whole gear coming without any like labels on it. It's a little strange, right? Like that's that's the impetus, right? Is like Tim got him a gear shift that doesn't have like reverse or drive or whatever, and he's kind of has right. to guess. That's uh, how's yeah, that gonna work? We know. should say we're not car guys, but yeah, that sh- struck me as well as a little strange. Uh, I actually am a car guy. So, <laughs> oh, uh, you've been lying all these years so to when me. I say, when I say I find it confusing, I mean, I, I have a good, I'm good authority. It's, it's pretty you can confusing take, stuff. You can take that as gospel right there. So, right. whatever. The car has paint on it. They ghost ride out of there and everybody's, you know, everybody's doing good. <laughs> Next scene, uh, we won't see anything about this scene ever again. So great yeah, opening scene. I thought I thought like they were, you know, there's actually a lot going on in this episode 
yeah. for a home improvement episode. Like, there's quite a few different threads, uh, but I was surprised that this didn't come back in any meaningful way, really. But you know, no. whatever. Whatever, Max Eisenberg, up to it again. Uh, at home, Mark is building a new model plane. Tim is also building a model uh, hybrid plane car of some sort. It's nice to see them bonding, and this is Mark's new hobby, so he's apparently been very excited about this. And Mark's Jill, only hobby? Jill, yeah, Jill says this thing that you, always, that you always hear people say when they have weird kids in movies, where it's like, oh... I'm so glad Mark finally has a hobby. It's just like, oh, thank gosh, you know, thank God he's finally into something. We, we just didn't know. It's like kind of that whole thing where it's like, is this kid going to be weird forever? What uh? What do you think he, so what is he, like 13 now, 12? I don't they know, said 11 like in the episode, yeah. So what is he doing in his free time before this is my question. <laughs> if this is his first time that he's ever gotten a hobby. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we saw him do homework once. I mean, that, I guess maybe it was that. <laughs> All right. Glasses. Well, yeah, glasses get... are his hobby. He likes glasses. Oh, okay. And he loves vision. Loves it. Yeah. Loves loves it. Okay. It. Good to know. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jill says, "Oh, I got a great idea. You can uh, encourage this hobby by going to the Air Museum." Uh, Tim thinks this is a great alternative to listening to a piano lesson of Jill's, and this is the first of very, very many jokes where Jill's piano is. I guess rightfully so attacked her piano skills, I should say. Yeah, they have a lot of continuity in this episode from previous episodes. So, you know, getting the piano from Uncle Henry, or uh, Cousin Henry, I guess, a few episodes back, and we're finally finally seeing that. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that, those small details, Jordan. That's just good writing. Mm, that's what we all live for. So yeah. we should move to the piano then. What do you think? Yeah, let's move to the piano. Uh, so Jill's playing the piano. Uh, there are several starts and stops. Uh, she has a elderly piano teacher behind her who's a, a recognizable face and I'll, I'll do a bio on her in a, in a bit but uh she she likes what she's hearing and then jill will make a mistake and she'll get very frustrated uh she, she's very animated but um jill eventually like stops and they kind of have a, a little bit of a, a bickering match back and forth because uh, the teacher says you know you're just not practicing and this is why you aren't getting any better and uh you know i think uh, randy and brad come down and uh, they essentially, you know, uh, reassert the fact that Jill has not been practicing. They kind of, kind of throw her under the bus and then, and then bail. And in a typical home improvement kids way, where they just like walk out the door, like, ah, we're we're heading to the office. Like they don't see where they're going or anything. Like, all right, see you later. Uh, Bye. Which, yeah, which just is just like later. Ryan Thornburg. Just like Ryan Thornburg. It must be they. Yeah, I don't know what they just. I just. I just. That cracks me up how they do this. They just like come and go as they please when they're like 12 you know i just really i don't know whatever that it just really gets me um boys leave and the teacher uh she's got jokes she's uh she's got jokes she's talking about you know she's heard she's been doing this for 50 years uh she's heard all the excuses uh dog ate my music kind of funny uh something else and then she sympathizes with the with the Nazis a little bit when she says that fighting in World War II was not a viable excuse for uh, missing piano <laughs> lessons. So I don't know. I mean, that's, I think that's what prompted me to want to, to want to go to the exhibit today is I just, I felt kind of conflicted by what she said. I'd say, I was wondering how old she must be if she's been teaching piano lessons that long. Uh, well, uh, let me do it. It's been 50 out. years, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you know, well into her seventies. Uh, Pat Crawford Brown, 180 credits to her name. Best known for Rami and Michelle's High School Reunion, one of your favorites. Mm. No, I Norbit, love it. Norbit, uh, Reality Bites. <laughs> also one of my favorites. Uh, our bellows, Norbit. Norbit, I ain't mad at him. Hey. Uh, <laughs> as well as a million other things. Um, Parks and Rec, Community, Days I of Our Lives. I remember her in Parks and Rec, I think. Yeah, she, she plays She Andy's, played like Andy's, one of... Andy's grandma. Yeah. Yeah, she's good. So that's it. She's I mean, funny. Memorable. I think she's funny. She's yeah, fine. I think she does a good job. Absolutely. And she talks about commitment and focus. Uh, focus, focus, focus. As you said, she hears, she's heard all the excuses and she doesn't want to hear any more. So that's that's where we have to go. She says you need to be practicing 30 minutes a day every day. Yeah. Um, you know, I admire Jill for wanting to put this piano to good use, but she's already really, really busy, I feel like. Yeah, all she does is talk about how busy she is. So, like, why add why add more, you know? I don't know. Uh yeah, but I didn't like the, what the piano teacher said about she's just not she's not a patriot, and uh, I don't know. I just don't really have any room for that in my home improvement episodes, frankly. 
That's true. And this is just a classic case for Jill uh, of just minimizing your life, you know? That's I don't know if, something you can yeah. cut, cut right out, you know? That's a really good example, Jordan. Uh, but I also <laughs> want to say, I don't know if you noticed, but when the piano teacher left, she gave the finger to the American flag, which I thought was <laughs> maybe a step too far. Well, she tried to reach and like pull it down so she could stomp yeah. on it, but she was she, <laughs> she was too like short. She, was, she acted like she was going to spit on it, and I was like, oh, I don't know. That is, this seems kind of like weird for home improvement, but... I don't know, they went there. They made it work. Yeah, 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 they sold it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they did. All right, so later Jill is practicing uh, on the piano. She's not really getting any better, and Brad and Randy are Well, why would also... she? It's the same day. Why is everybody wanting <laughs> to get so good so fast? <laughs> I don't get it. Give her some time. Uh, you know, it's, it's just that easy to play a musical instrument. So she, uh, mm-hmm. she's not, she's not figuring it out, but Brad and Randy are trying to endure in the other room. The boys come in and they, they want to put a stop to this, but they're going to try to pull a fast one. Basically they say she's doing so good that she can just stop and relax and she knows better. Uh, in comes Mark and Tim and mm-hmm. Tim tries to pull the same, same exact stunt does not yeah. work. Uh, they ch- chat about how awesome the air museum was and uh, Mark got into a little tiny plane, which ticks off Jill right away. She's mm-hmm. uh, apprehensive of this. Tim mm-hmm. also uh, let Mark uh, get the idea that he could take flying lessons if his mother agrees. Put her in a really tough spot right there. I'll say, yeah. She, she hates the idea right away. It's, uh, it's a bugaboo for her, and I think, <laughs> I think for you, too. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Tim and Jill also chat about it, like, right now, right in front of mark i think he maybe i don't know if he runs he, up. he runs he, he runs off uh i was gonna randomly, say and then randomly comes back like two minutes later yeah he comes down for the verdict but yeah tim is trying to sell it to jill say it's safer than it sounds it's safer than driving there's some some jokes where i, I think it's pretty good writing he says like it's safer than driving and jill says not or what maybe when you're it's driving. so funny i don't yeah. remember it yeah maybe when yeah. you're driving yeah. so funny i don't remember it, and i just watched it about an hour ago uh, yeah, like I said, Mark comes down for the verdict. It's an it's a hard pass for Jill, and uh, there goes his hobby. Now he's just going to be doing homework again. You know, you feel for Mark here because he says before he runs upstairs the first time, "I've never wanted anything more in my entire life." And I thought, <laughs> "Wow, well, that's really something." Uh, and then I, I liked at the end of the scene how uh, you know they mentioned like you can maybe do it when you're later, and Tim says. Uh, he says how old, and Tim says, uh, you know about Methuselah? I'm thinking, like, how does Tim know yeah, about Methuselah? Was... He, can't even, he can't even say statistics, you know? He can't even say that, so. Yeah. No, but that made me laugh. I, You know, now that I'm thinking about Mark's hobbies, whatever happened to the Boy Scouts? Yeah, whatever happened to their sports memorabilia? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. It is uh, unanswerable, though. So uh, just like the Boy Scouts, unanswerable. Chalk it up to an unsolved mystery. All right, mm, next scene. Dun, dun. Tool time, I'm... Jordan. Is it? Tool time. Uh, there's going to be an interview, <laughs> and we get we get another nice little bit of continuity where they roll out the uh, interviewee uh, desk and, and chairs, and I like that. I like I like seeing the callbacks here. I appreciate you that. You love it. You love it. I you love know what it. else you love? A callback to uh, Captain Bowersox. Well, this is, it's good to see Tim's, we should say the, the crew of the Endeavor uh, from two years ago, uh, partially are back with the Columbia. We get to see Tim's greatest uh, comedic foil to date, and that's Ken Bowersox. And uh, I was ecstatic <laughs> to see him come down, because he's got real chops, Jordan. Uh, sure. Is that, is that what you call him? He's got real chops, and you know what? He's game. Uh, so the crew comes down, they, they, uh, they sit in the, the new set. And uh, mm-hmm. they just kind of just kind of riff back and forth, uh, just like we do to start our episodes. It's basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah, Bower Sox makes us look pretty nuanced. I gotta say, uh, <laughs> you know, there's reference to Tim stealing the tools and uh, some stuff that happened. More before. continuity. This is yeah. like Adam's dream episode right continuity here. Continuity fest. I love it. Yeah, you don't get a lot mm-hmm. of it on home improvement, so you gotta take it where you can get it. <laughs> Sometimes um, you get episodes that were filmed two years prior. <laughs> you know? Sometimes people are literally a decade younger than they were in the previous episode. So yeah, I'll take it. Uh, this is kind of this doesn't actually really go anywhere. There's one moment where Bower Sox mentions that uh, his mom is only afraid when he goes in small planes, which is like to me, that's not necessary. Like what? A, I don't know. Is like that they too didn't much do anything you? with it. Yeah, like I thought that they were gonna maybe like draw that out a little bit more, but it's just like a quick line in passing that I don't know. It doesn't really 
add a lot. Um, we can mention that Tim mentions that he has a PhD, much like the entire crew of the of Columbia, except for Bauer Sox, who doesn't have one, uh, which Tim kind of kind of rubs in. But uh, Bauer Sox is is quick to uh, remind him that he is the commander. Um, mm. Actually, I, the cr- by... I think the crew kind of comes oh, up crew. to his defense as well. You know, they say, "No, we don't. We don't back talk him because he's the commander." So, uh, Bauer Sox, he's good. At, he makes a lot of like faces, like goofy faces. Like he's kind of that's sort oh, of his man. brand of comedy. He, the camera sure and the camera loves him. Um, I'm wondering, should we legally change his name to Banter Sox after this one? Because he's kind of the king of banter with Tim. <laughs> banter Sox. Sure, uh, the let's scene, do it. The scene, let's do it. The scene ends with uh, what I was told was actual, and by told, I mean I read online, actual footage <laughs> from, there's someone told me today at the, at the Jewish Museum. Inside sources say. You got a BuzzFeed contact or something? Uh, I wish, man. Um, uh, reference, uh, the video shows a, a screwdriver and home improvement tapes that Tim gave. The screwdriver doesn't work because... You know, they're in space, and uh, the tapes they use to fall asleep. So, uh, in Bower Sox, uh, oh man, there's one line I forgot earlier, where Tim, it's really funny, Tim is like, they're talking about like aerodynamics or something, and Tim's like, I could I could take a piss and tell you about aerodynamics, and <laughs> Bower Sox is like, well, I guess our mission was pretty pointless then. And, and that's just, when like, he does wing. his weird face. Yeah, it's just like super <laughs> weird, not funny, kind of awkward, and no one knows what to say. Great scene. Yeah, that's a great scene. Bower Sox rules, and uh, we're all happy ban- about it. Banter, so- banter Sox. Banter Sox. We're going to open every episode with Banter Sox Corner. He will be back a third time, so... Uh, Unbelievable. Better, sa- better start the countdown now. <laughs> I, looked at his, I looked at his Wikipedia page, and uh, yeah, he's going to be back a third time. And he's also the youngest man to command a space mission. Uh, so good thing he's doing all this uh, undignified comedy on home improvement. Because uh, those <laughs> two really think, work together well. Do you think he's, like, badgering them? Like, hey, when can I get back on home improvement? Like, <laughs> he, just, like, loves, he just, like, loves Tim Allen. And just, like, yeah. <laughs> he, he writes some letters on NASA stationery. And he's like, hey, guys, you got to have me back. I was a fan favorite. <laughs> Oh man, that's wild! I can't believe he's coming back. So I'll I'll, I'll be preparing Return for that. Return of the socks. <laughs> One sock on. All right, <laughs> uh, back to the piano now, and Jill starts to practice, but the piano won't work, and we wonder why. What is going on? Mystery is quickly solved because she opens up the in the innards of the piano. I think that's the technical term. <laughs> and the- <laughs> slices it open. <laughs> The clothes, there's some clothes that have been stuffed inside by the boys, and uh, they come down and try to say, like, hey, at least we picked up our clothes. Uh, Mark comes in. He's pretty grouchy. He's upset, and he has been for some time, so I guess some time has passed. Hey, Jordan, uh, can I interrupt you for a second? No. Should we call him Groucho Marx? <laughs> Improv, baby. Go ahead. Yay, yeah, hey, man. Hey, $195 well spent. <laughs> <laughs> all right um wow I, it sounds like you should be teaching those classes if you ask me all right i'm beginning Mar- to ask myself the same thing uh jill has tried to buy back mark's favor a few times and in this case she is trying to use another model plane and he just won't accept it and she's upset and so she yeah. she looks outside she looks for solace and she sees a semi-naked man jumping over the fence and that's wilson so she yeah. goes outside to greet him and we're gonna play a clip play that clip <sighs> <What's> that? <laughs> well hi ho good neighbor Are you trying to get pneumonia or are you rehearsing for a production of No No Nanette? No, 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 Jill. Have you ever heard of the Polar Bear Club? Yeah, it's that group of maniacs that swim in the middle of winter. Well, I'll say hello to the head maniac. <sighs> Boy, this could be an invigorating hobby. Well, at least it's less dangerous than the one Mark wants to have. He wants to take flying lessons. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, yeah, and Tim is trying to convince me of how safe it is. Well, Jill, as an experienced pilot, I can assure you that learning with a licensed instructor is quite safe. 
I didn't know you were a pilot. Oh, yes, indeedy. I've logged over a thousand hours since I flew spy planes during the war. You were a spy? Mm. Which war? I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> well, I, I, I just hate the idea of Mark flying in uh -huh. those planes. I mean, uh -huh. my father flew in those small military planes all the time. Right. And even though it was peacetime, uh -huh. my mother was always a basket case until he got back. You know, we all were. Well, Joe, from what you tell me of your family, I'm reminded of the behavior of baboons. <laughs> the studies have shown that the offspring of baboons pick up their parents' fears, whether those fears are justified or not. So you're saying that I'm afraid for Mark because my mother projected her fears onto me? Well, I can't say that for sure. Jill, have you ever been up in a small plane? Of course. The Dumbo ride at Disney World. <laughs> Well, I think what would really help you is to take a ride in a small aircraft just to see how darn safe they really are. I don't think so. I'd be too scared. Well, are you really scared, or are you just echoing your mother's fears? I don't know. I'd hate to think that I was passing my fears on to the kids, though. And thanks to their father, they're already afraid of glues, hammers, and anything in reverse. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to take you up. It's just that there are a few countries I can't fly over. Which ones? I'm not at liberty to say. Side yard, winter. Wilson's engaging in some BDSM, Jordan? <laughs> I mean, that's what it looks like. Uh, he's got, like... He's, like, I, I mean, you can you can see, like, the lines on his butt cheeks. It's, it's pretty yeah. uh, revealing clothing. Uh, yeah, it's, like shorts with suspenders going around like you're seeing more than you probably need to see but uh it's all in preparation for the polar bear club which is uh some sort of a winter swimming syndicate i suppose uh <laughs> you not... make it sound like a crime family <laughs> well we don't know the inner workings <laughs> not dissimilar from kramer swimming in the uh the hudson river during some science yeah, kind of yeah. reminded me of that as well um so yeah, after that whole that whole deal, uh, Wilson kind of talks uh, talks Jill down from the current situation. Um, Jill tries to blame her parents uh, for, you know, transmitting their fears down to her, and she is in tune in turn trying to do the same to Mark. Uh, you know, she's afraid of flying, and so she's trying to make him, or inadvertently trying to make him afraid of flying. Uh, Wilson references baboons uh, who pick up fear from their parents. Um, which doesn't really go anywhere, but, uh, you know, it seemed worth mentioning. Uh, Jill eventually... <laughs> it seemed poignant uh, at the time. Yeah, it was only one line. No one really, no one really reflected on it much more. Uh, <laughs> Wilson, uh, you know, he says, you know, you should try to take a ride. I, I was a pilot during the war. I was also a spy, which, you know, I, I could buy that. And, uh, you know, you should, you should go up there. I got, I have a thousand hours, so I'm only 9,000 short of being a, an expert. Um, and, uh, yeah. Wow, I, I mean, what what has Wilson not done? Is the real question. Yeah, um, what would Wilson do? You know, mm, good w question. W W W W W W W. Yeah, that's the end of the scene, and uh, I guess Jill agrees that she'll go flying with Wilson, right? That's where we're gonna go. Yes. All Please. right, in the plane. <laughs> In the please. plane. Please, next scene. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Check, please. In the plane, <laughs> Mark has a knack for flying uh, right away. He's, you got Wilson in the front, you got Mark in the front, and you got Mom and Dad in the back. Jill is not scared, <laughs> uh, except for I she's... I like it. <laughs> Jill is, uh, is digging her nails into Tim's thigh, but she says she's not scared. Uh, and then she really gets scared because Tim hits something on the dashboard and it causes the engine to die. Luckily, Wilson fix it very, fixes it very quickly and uh, Jill changes her tune. She says, Mark can fly as long as Tim is not in the plane with him. So all's well that ends well, right? Yeah, definitely. I guess we should ask this earlier. Have you ever been in a really small plane like this? No, I, I don't think so. I've... Maybe when I was younger, uh, flying somewhere, but I don't remember it as I got older, for sure. Neither have I. I don't think I ever will. Uh, 
I think I've it's heard, perhaps I've, even, I think it's even, it seems even more dangerous. I think it's more dangerous even in real life than the episode posits. It seems to me. I don't know. They seem, I don't know, from what I've heard of other people who have flown in smaller planes, it just seems to be a little bit more affected by turbulence and stuff like that. So it, it probably yeah. is a little more shaky. Yeah, well, hard pass but, for me. But we're experts, so take our word for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love cars and planes. Next scene. <laughs> uh, piano, thanks. Uh, Jill is practicing <laughs> piano. again. Her, her teacher is behind her, and she is again very frustrated. Jill has not gotten any better. Uh, seemingly because she refuses to practice, which again, like, give up the ghost, Jill. Like, just just don't play the piano. Um, Jill tries to explain the laundry and the piano situation. The teacher says, "I've heard a lot of excuses, but this one is just plain silly." Real credits fade to black. <laughs> uh, fear of flying. <laughs> yeah, there is an outtake here that I don't know if you. Oh were man, able I got I got I got a hot take on this. Um, this is probably the first outtake I've ever seen that I think should have been in the actual episode. Like, yeah, like, I, yeah it's good. It's funny. It, it's like cool. I, I enjoyed seeing it. Get rid of the bud scene and just put this in there and it wraps it up much better. We should, ex- like. we should describe it. Go ahead. So, yeah, Tim is with Bauer Socks, uh, Banter Socks, and they mm-hmm. are kind of finishing up the interview. And Tim's got one last trick up his sleeve, and he says, <laughs> try to get out of this tight spot. And all of the astronauts scramble as he hits, like, the, I don't know, the retract button to send the something? interview. To, yeah, retract button. Uh, one of those, it seems like you're in, I don't know, the Bat Cave or something, and he's got some sort of special button. So he presses it, and everyone escapes except for Bower Socks, and he gets trapped in the desk. The crowd's Bower very Socks happy about this. Bower Socks also, like, basically jumps inside of the thing. Like, he makes no effort to get out of there. <laughs> well, like, he has to get down, or his head's going to get chopped off. Oh, is that what happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I I thought yeah, I thought it was funny they should have had it in the actual episode. You're right, cut the, cut the bud stuff and save that for a rainy day. Mm, yeah, that could fit in any episode the way they used it, but yeah, what are you gonna so, do? Whatever. Roll credits, fade to black. Fear of flying. Jordan, a nickel for your thoughts. I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was pretty well written. Uh, had like you said a few different threads that were going on from Mark's new hobby to uh, the piano time. I, I liked the piano teacher. I thought she was pretty funny. Although I don't like how much she hates America. I think that's that's yeah, tough to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? that's got that's got to be a low. I mean, like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just found that to be like super awkward. Just like the in the in the burning of the flag at the end, like that's a poor taste. So yeah, I'm surprised Bower Sox didn't come over and punch her in the face. But I'm yeah, I was waiting for that too. That would have been a cool bonus scene. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no i i did enjoy it i mean there's not like it, it's not a heavy hitting episode by any means but you got something for everybody to do and it's entertaining and i mean besides the bud scene which you know you know what was going to happen there and it didn't really fit in at all other than that it was i think it was a fine episode what do you think yeah i gotta say when i saw this one coming up and i saw the picture on hulu of mark flying i was like oh this one's gonna suck like <laughs> can we can we skip, can we skip it <laughs> yeah like is this the first thing we skip but no it was it was pretty good uh a lot of uh like a good variety of plot lines all of which were uh you know effective funny enough uh i like the piano teacher and the piano struggles um mark and the plane stuff is you know interesting in so much as we haven't really seen them do anything like that with mark before um you know it's cool seeing mark be grouchy aka groucho marks um yeah the, nothing ba- cooler than that. the bower sock stuff is i don't know if it's actually good but like it's just funny because he's so bad and uh, yeah it's, just, it's so bad it's good that's yeah, definitely it's like, what i would say he's just like he's just hamming it up so much that i can't help but kind of like it uh, so yeah, that was good. And there's, there's good lines, good jokes. And, uh, you know, Wilson is showing some skin, which is never a bad thing. So, uh, <laughs> in terms of lows, I mean, like, I don't know. I thought that the laundry and the piano thing was kind of stupid. So the fact that they mentioned that twice was, I don't know, not super, uh, enter- entertaining to me. What, you've never but, done that? <laughs> I've heard of dirty laundry, but geez. Jeez. Um, jeez. 
I don't know. Other than that, like, yeah, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Uh, maybe maybe the actual flying of the plane could have been a little bit more dramatic, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I want him to do, like crash or something. I, I guess it's not that realistic. <laughs> it is funny. So. It's funny how quickly Wilson fixed like this engine problem. That oh, like... I know. Yeah, yeah. It is like really fast. So whatever. Uh, pretty good episode, though. Better than I expected. Don't judge an episode by its uh, by its photo. That's what I'm by saying. By its thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good call on that one. All right, let's move on to Sean's social media roundup. If you'd like to reach out to us, go to thehomeandpodcast.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter at Home and Podcast. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, uh, we'd love for you to do that. You can go to your podcasting app or iTunes, leave a review uh, that helps other people find us and gives us great feedback. Also, uh, we do have a Patreon, so if you are financially inclined, you can go to patreon.com slash homeandpodcast. There you can get bonus episodes such as Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, which will be out very shortly, uh, Rush Hour for Richer or Poor, and many, many more to come. Uh, that's patreon.com slash homeinpodcast. Adam, I know there's a lot going on on Twitter, so I'd like you to fill me in. Yeah, Jordan, I'd be happy to. Um, poll last week, 32 votes. Dang. Um, oh, man, I, I forgot that this was <laughs> a poll. Wait, crap. I, I don't, I don't even... To... <laughs> you know, what? actually, I'm just going to punt this this week, so I don't, I don't want to nah, talk to social media. So. I, I, think, I think we're uh, talking about this. I just got to punt. I think we got it. Actually, you know what? I'm not feeling so hot, so I better, I better get off. <laughs> better okay. cut out early. Uh, th- I have improv class tonight. Um, 32 total <laughs> votes. Uh, have you ever heard of Tin Snip before? Twenty two percent said no. And this is seventy eight. You know. Shut up! I'm trying to. I'm trying to give you credit. Shut up. Twenty two percent said no. Seventy eight percent said yes. Uh, and there were some responses as well. Um, well, there was a response. Someone said that it's very common and that I should know about it. And to that, I say, well, <laughs> screw you know off. What? Screw <laughs> off uh screw off lovingly but uh yeah i guess i was wrong uh i'm happy to admit it tin snip is very much a big popular term that everybody knows in the world except for me and a handful of other people i think to those of you that didn't know what it is let's form a support group and uh conquer the world because no one should feel ousted because they don't know what something (laughs) is that's not i mean like that's not the kind of country i want to live in and uh after watching the flag be disrespected (laughs) during this last episode um i'm just i'm feeling kind of vulnerable and i'm i don't i don't know but that's fine whatever i'm not letting you turn this around into a a pity show for you (laughs) you didn't know what tin snip was everyone else does but it's what i do best (laughs) (laughs) can we talk more about how uh how sweet my grumpy picture was yeah four likes so pretty good pretty good Uh, i gotta be honest man i thought it was gonna be better (laughs) <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not to, I'm not trying to be mean but i thought it was gonna be better <laughs> i'd like Are to you see go- your grumpy picture i mean i can't draw worth i can't draw at all but like i also don't hang my drawings uh above <laughs> my desk so. i'm not sure i'm not even sure why i hung it up there to be honest <laughs> yeah i bet you aren't because you were freaking <laughs> proud uh otherwise uh i posted some bogus 10-year challenge photos just because uh it was trending and i'm uh, social media maven and uh otherwise yeah we have some questions but i think we'll save those for a little bit but uh yeah follow us on twitter great polls sometimes they're not right and uh the data is skewed and things aren't factual like this tin snip one but generally they're pretty reliable so hmm. and there's also seems to be a re-emerging push to get jtt on the show i wasn't gonna say anything about it because i didn't want to jinx it but yeah since you brought it up uh pr says she's gonna ask him so uh, oh my gosh! You know, I don't know. You, you know, you know how it is, Jordan. You know Hollywood. You know how. You know, just don't, don't <laughs> yeah, get your hopes I know up, Hollywood, guys. All right. <laughs> don't, don't get your hopes up, guys, because in in Hollywood, anything can happen. Uh, so let's we'll just uh, let's just be tempered uh, with regards to that, and maybe it'll happen. You know, maybe it won't. You know what I'm not tempered about? That? I'm just excited that we've reached the 600 follower threshold on Twitter. I just want to say thanks to everyone who goes to Twitter and follows us and interacts with us and uh, has a good time. When I say us, I mostly mean you, but yeah, it, it's yeah. cool to have uh, people following the show, interested in home improvement, <laughs> and uh, making it fun for us. So keep following us. Definitely, Tell all your friends, yeah. too. 
Twitter has been good to us and uh, hopefully will continue to be good to us in the future. So, yeah, thanks for the follows and thanks for voting in the polls, uh, mostly. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Adam, you mentioned we have a couple of questions. Does that mean I need to open the mailbag? Yeah, go ahead and rip open the mailbag if you don't mind. You've got mail. All right. Uh, first question comes from at I am numero uno, which Jordan, of course, won. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for which, explaining that to me. <laughs> making sure, man. I know you had a different Spanish teacher than I did. She wasn't supposed to be as good. Um, which seasonally themed episodes do you prefer the most? Uh, the summer episodes or the winter episodes? Oh. There's another even... one uh, that I'll get to in a second. But yeah. Um, I can't even really think of any memorable summer episodes. The only one I can think of is the one that kicks off season five where they head to like North, uh, Northern Michigan and do the golf. Trevor thing city. And the, yeah. That, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I, there, I'm trying to think of icon. That's like the only summer episode that really comes to mind. They don't do like a quote unquote, like, I don't know, like there's never like a 4th of July episode or anything like that, so... Um, Which, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, they're they're basically running from fall to spring. Yeah, you're right. So uh, you don't, you don't yeah. really expect them to have much of those. So yeah, I, w- I would say winter, you got you got the Christmas episode mm-hmm. in there, yeah. and uh, that's always memorable, so... Yeah, there's always a Christmas kind of Thanksgiving adjacent episode. Uh, maybe they get a two or three, uh, maybe at least two usually out of that out of those holidays so yeah the christmas ones are i feel like there's some valentine's ones but maybe i'm making that up i don't know maybe we'll we'll have to i i think we've had them before but yeah i gotta say the winter ones just because i i hold the the christmas uh, episodes in in such high regard let Uh, me ask you do you like christmas or halloween better i think we've talked about this before but um have we yeah i i think uh, i gotta say halloween still yeah i would agree i would agree all right what's the second question uh, he says, out of uh, the eight seasons of the show, which is your favorite? I don't really think we can answer that because we're only through five. So, um, I mean, we could say which I gotta of the say, five has been our favorite, but I don't know. Yeah, we do talk about that usually on our season in summation, but I will say, you know, I, we, we're not done with season five yet, but it's better than I thought it was going to be. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would echo that. I think top to bottom, season five hasn't had nearly as many stinkers as some of the other seasons. So I don't know where it's going to rank when we're all said and done. But uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty good. All right, uh, next question, Jordan comes from at Patricia Patricia Richardson, L.A. Uh, question Who's that? is, uh, here's the question: Why are my replies turning up as main tweets? Must still be blind. <laughs> <laughs> you expect me to is this like a technical support question she was like she was like <laughs> responding to a thread uh and i don't know it just popped up so it was <laughs> responding to a thread from uh like the the jtt stuff so oh, uh, I, assumed, okay. I assumed it was for our mailbag <laughs> <laughs> good call this is why we have you field all those questions uh so at super nerd 15 responded to her question by saying oh have good you we don't have to answer it have you refreshed the page? Sometimes my phone likes to be dumb and not register it. Haha, <laughs> refreshing. Oh, you know, it it's works. there's one tried and true like method to fixing anything, and that's turn it on and turn it back off, or turn I'll it say, off and turn it back on. I'll say so. That that's a satisfying question. Uh, here's the last one, Jordan. This is from at the Halloween Pod, and they want to know: Is tool time a metaphor for how we lived our life in the '90s? Wow, I wish I would have been more prepared to think about that one. That well, one that's, seems uh, that's deep. J- J- Jason posed that one originally, if you recall. Hmm. Do you remember, I, at do first, you, remember, you, you, you said you Halloween. Jason? No, you said Halloween, and then you said Jason, and so I was oh, thinking, like... You, did you get scared? <laughs> I was terrified. I wondered why you paused. I thought you didn't remember Jason, but you just got scared. Oh, oh. man. Makes sense. I was I was terrified. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so, is it a metaphor? Is it a metaphor for how we live our lives? I think we're always... Yeah. I- yeah, give me, give me, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna say yeah. I think we're always working on different parts of our lives that we want to mm-hmm. improve, and sometimes we do that successfully, and sometimes we we fall on our face. But the important thing is that we have a partner um, by our side who you know maybe is a spouse or maybe a friend or family, and mm-hmm. they're and they're yeah. there to pick us up. So take it or leave it. Could, man, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, I mean. Ditto, I guess, but yeah, I uh, when I saw this question, I immediately thought, 
Yes. I'm going to stick with that answer. <laughs> good answer. Uh, good answer, just like Family Feud. Good, yeah, good answer. <laughs> uh, and that uh, that's basically it. Thank you for the questions. Uh, you know, they don't have to be deep or poignant necessarily. We just we just like answering them. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, they can be... <laughs> they could be technical support questions, as we saw here. So yeah, I mean, we didn't need to answer that, but we definitely could have. I definitely would have said refresh or turn on, turn off. So, uh, Jordan, <laughs> do we have any new iTunes reviews or anything, or no? No, I think we had thirty three last time, correct? And I, I think we have thirty three now as well. Yeah, I just by next week, can up. we get like, can we get like three hundred and thirty maybe? Or... Seems like a low bar to reach, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, anything else we need to cover before we we uh, get to the end of this one? I think it's time for the question of the week. All right, let's let's do it. Adam, I'm going to take a page out of Jennifer Garner's book. <laughs> As in, like, uh, 13 going on 30, Jennifer Garner? <laughs> That's right, the uh, the actress. And uh, I'm wondering, I think you can tell mm-hmm. a lot about a person by the types of things they keep in their wallet. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, what's in your wallet? <laughs> You had me go get it, so I knew this was coming. Um, I recently <laughs> got a new wallet, so I think I've purged a lot of the junk. But um, You're always you know, purging, man. I tell you what, man, I'm more condo than you know. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, interesting things, or stupid things. I have like a Goodwill benefits card that I use when I buy <laughs> things at Goodwill. I don't know what? how it works, and I don't know. Like I'm apparently accruing points, but I've never used those points. I used to <laughs> live by I've never even heard of that. I'll, I could post a picture. I used to live by one in St. Charles, so I'd walk over there a fair amount. But uh, yeah, if anybody else out there has this Goodwill card and you're getting points from it, let me know how because I'd like to make the most of it. Uh, Dollar Shave Club for men, fifteen dollar uh, voucher for Christmas. Um, this is a great question, Jordan. Really good. Uh, I know. Oh, here's my my NIU student ID, so if I want to get like student discounts, even though I graduated four years ago, I can pop <laughs> this card out. I hope they don't notice I look older. Um, yeah, a debit card. That's pretty good. good. That's more than I good. expected. Goodwill card, new library card, AAA card. Ah, I got a AAA insurance. card as well. I like it. Team AAA. Um, company credit card, no big deal. Uh... Oh, here's a gift card I should just get rid of because there's nothing left on it. So this has been helpful. I'll get rid of that. I uh, was just going to say, I, so it's a good thing I asked this question yeah. because I haven't gone through this in a while. And uh, I don't have a wallet, but I have kind of like a, it's like a money clip slash have you You've slot. never been a wallet guy, right? You, you always use no, money clips. No, I've always, yeah, I've always had like, and this one's, I guess, a hybrid because it does have a slot for stuff, but it's not a wallet. And, oh. uh, you know, I've got, like you said, there's a couple credit cards in here. Uh, insurance cards, AAA. I have two gift cards in here that I'm pretty sure have less than a dollar on them. Like, yeah, time to get rid of those. <laughs> time to, they've been in here for months. Uh, I've got a TJ Maxx Marshalls and Home Goods gift card, and uh, mm-hmm. of course my trusty Osceola Library System card. So turn up, yeah. You gotta, know, gotta have it. Turn up, baby. Got up. No, uh, uh, good. No goodwill card though. No goodwill card. I'm glad you okay. told me about that because I I feel like I've been they've been scamming me all these years going into goodwill and they didn't tell me about the rewards program. What's that about? <laughs> well, they'll tell you that you can get it and then they won't explain what it does. So don't feel too bad. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Uh, no, that was. I think that was enlightening. I feel like I know a lot more about you. I. Oh yeah, I also yeah. forgot to mention a thousand dollars cool hard cash. <laughs> Whoops, didn't notice that behind my Amex card. Whoops, whoops. Have you watched uh, any of the, the Fire Festival documentaries that are out? No, I have not even do, heard do, of that. I don't do even know, know what it means. A, okay, well, we won't is that, that You mean, is that uh, Financial Independence Retire Early? Is that what you're talking about? No, it's like a it's like a, a, a festival that this dude like had in the Bahamas, like a music festival like two years ago, and it was just like a huge failure, and he like went to prison for scamming people or whatever uh oh and i don't know there's like a two there's like a there's a really popular netflix and hulu documentary that are like kind of like taking different sides of the whole thing and whatever it doesn't you should maybe watch the netflix one it's kind of interesting but um the guy like okay, this is not that important we should cut this out <laughs> but the guy like rose to the guy like rose to fame because he came up with a special kind of like socialite credit card that was like actual metal and people like slamming it down oh. and uh, he's a big scam artist and he's in prison and he's kind of a piece of garbage but uh made me sounds think like of a this. winner 
It's uh, they're good documentaries. I know you don't uh, you don't watch a lot that doesn't have Iron Man in it, but uh, if you ever find time, you might want to watch this one. Are those cards made out of iron? Because that would be enough for me, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think they're made of uh, cold hard steel, uh, <laughs> blue blue steel specifically. Jordan, what are we cover next week? Next week, it's it's gonna maybe get serious again, and it's gonna be next. when when Harry kept Dolores. Kept. Oh, All right. Well. <laughs> Uh, Not what you have expected, huh? I don't know about that, but uh, looking forward to to, to talking about it. Uh, Jordan, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining me. Listeners, thank you for listening. Uh, Take care. Take care, everybody.